Welcome back to The Hobby Musician, everyone. Now, if you're new to the channel, we're so glad you're here. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and click the bell so that you get notified every time we have a new episode. Now, in today's episode, um, I was kind of thinking recently that pretty much anybody on YouTube that talks about guitar or bass or music uh, in general, it's pretty much a rite of passage that at some point you've got to do a pedal board building episode. Now, when I was thinking about then, well, how do I do that for this channel in keeping with our theme, um, really focusing on how do we use gear that's flexible and how do we use gear that's affordable, uh, not cheap, but affordable, good gear that has a lot of options. Well, I wanted to kind of do my version on a budget build. So what can you do uh, for a minimum amount of finances, but also still have some functionality? Now, you can also find these types of builds uh, on a lot of folks' channel, but really when I was going through, I kind of think this episode might be unique in just how much of a budget we can really accomplish. So I just want to take you through what I plan to put on this board. And one of the first things is you really can't do any board. Um, you've heard this said on other channels, you're going to hear it on my channel, you've got to have a tuner. So when it comes to kind of counting pedals and um, how, you know, what, what types of effects, I don't really consider a tuner an effect. This is an essential. You got to have one. So that's, uh, it's going to be on the board, but it's not going to be something that I'm going to count kind of after this. All right, well, what pedals do I count? So if I'm thinking about a guitar effect board, um, I'm gonna need some flexibility. Um, the types of music that I play, the opportunities that I have right now um, for uh, covering music styles, I need to be able to kind of get into the rock, you know, kind of classic rock vibe. I also need to get into the kind of clean stuff or uh, also I need to be able to do some ambient things. So I need to cover some space, some variety of tones. Well. I think that I'm going to be able to do that with just what I have. Now, the first two pedals, I'm going to talk about them in, in combination, I'm going to have two drive pedals. Now, if you're thinking, well, shouldn't you be able to do everything with one drive pedal? You know, you could, you might be able to, but there's specific reasons why I'm picking these. I'm going to use the Boss SD-1, the Super Overdrive, and I'm going to be uh, running that into Tone City's Dry Martini. Now, what I use these pedals for is actually kind of different. The SD-1, the Boss Drive, the Super Overdrive, is a tried and true pedal. The Boss has been around for decades and decades, um, and their stuff is good. It's affordable and it's usable. But the SD-1 is very nice for that mildly overdriven, just, we're talking like subtle bit of push to your signal. So if I want to just bump it up a little bit and just start to get some hair and fuzz on that uh, channel, that's what, I'm, what I usually set up the SD-1. It has a really nice tone for that. But if I need to go further, I'm going to turn to the, the Tone City Dry Martini. Um, I will say that as a company, Tone City make uh, very affordable pedals and they make a ton of pedals. And I will be the first to admit, although I'm a fan of Tone City, I will not sit here and try to say that I think every single drive pedal that Tone City makes uh, sounds unique and they all have their own thing. There's some pedals that they make that sound similar to other ones, but in looking through those, I did stumble across this one. Now the Dry Martini is modeled after, or supposedly like kind of wired and, and voiced like um, Full Tone's OCD, the ob Obsessive Compulsive Drive. and um, what they what they really get right is that drive pedal has some um, it has some push it has some snarl and I've described this um, I've told friends this is there's a lot of snarl in this little box and so with the boss pedal being my light overdrive this pedal is going to serve for kind of my more heavy overdrive and I will tell you right now running when I run them both when I stack them putting a little bit of a boost into this pedal you really get some great sounding drive. So that's our drive section on this board. Now, what else are we gonna have? Are we gonna have chorus pedals and tremolos and all that kind of stuff? No, we're gonna go straight to the reverb and delay. And I'm gonna explain why. I'm trying to keep this as stripped down as possible. And some of those things, the choruses, the modulations, things like that, um, we're actually gonna be able to get out of some clever settings on these pedals that we have. So what are we gonna have for our delay? Um, we're gonna be using the TC Electronics flashback delay. 
Now, this just happens to be one I have. You know, none of these companies are sponsors uh, of the channel by any means. But what I found with the TC Electronic, the, the flashback delay, not only do they have tons of great pre-built settings in here. Um, all of the ones that come on this pedal, you know, you can go through, they've got a modulated delay, ping pong delay, a tape delay. The tape delay is really great on this. One of the things that's nice is they also have the tone print option. So built into this pedal are great presets, but as a company, TC Electronics also offers libraries of additional tones, additional settings that you can scroll through, try out. They're all free once you, you, know, you buy the pedal and you can then load them. If you find one of the dozens and dozens and almost hundreds of other presets, if you like one of those, you can actually beam it. You can use your phone or use the USB cable and, and put it onto the pedal. So that's what makes this type of pedal super flexible. Now, the same thing is going to be true with the reverb pedal that we're using. We're using the TC Electronic, the Hall of Fame reverb. And again, they have great pre-built settings. I like, my personal favorite is the church setting. That is just such a spacious reverb. But if I get bored of those, or if I need an additional reverb sound, I just pull up the tone print options and I can, again, load that into um, one of the settings on this pedal, which opens up what I can do. So if I do need a chorusy sounding thing or a modulated sounding thing, I'm actually going to be able to accomplish that, you know, in a pinch for a budget. Uh, between these two pedals. We can set up delays with modulations or reverbs with modulations uh, that can kind of help us cover that. So with that in mind, I've got my four pedals that I'm going to build my board with. The board that I'm using is actually um, an older board that I had in previous builds. Um, this is just, there's nothing fancy about this board. It is just a, an angled metal uh, board. You can see here I've already got some um, uh, 3M, some dual lock tape uh, already on here from previous iterations of the board that I've used. Um, this, I think this particular model came from uh, Donner uh, Company, the pedal board company, uh, but it's, there's nothing fancy about this board. The, the foot pedal you see on here already is a Boss volume pedal. Um, so I'm not a big wah pedal user. I just, I, I don't have the opportunity or the, the uh, music that I play right now just doesn't have a lot of wah in it. But using a volume pedal is just a functional thing that I use. I, I like to do like uh, swell, like volume swells if I'm doing ambient guitar playing, and I'm not great with using the volume knob on a guitar. I use you know a foot pedal to do that. So it's just a functional thing that I use. And the power supply that I'm going to use down here on the bottom, you can see, um, again, it's still zip tied from previous iterations. Um, it's just the Voodoo Power, uh, Voodoo Labs uh, pedal power pedal power 2 plus uh, whatever that one is uh, yeah pedal power 2 plus and I've got that zip tied under here and so just leading out to it you can see I'm just gonna run the power uh, from there so with that in mind I've got my um, patch cables you know ready to go I've got more zip ties for uh, cleaning up all the things so with that uh, we'll go ahead and get started we'll put all these pedals on this board and we'll get going so hang tight and we'll be back and get some sounds out of this all right, here we go. With just the selection of pedals that we've picked, um, it doesn't take really too long to kind of wire up everything. So I'll just talk us through kind of how I've got things set. Um, with the very beginning of the chain, the guitar or the bass is going to plug into the input of this volume pedal. 
Now, the particular Boss volume pedal that I have has a nice little feature. It has a dedicated tuner output. So I've got coming out of the side of this pedal, I've got um, a, a patch cable that takes my signal directly into the tuner. Now, the tuner, with it, with it working this way, I can leave the tuner on all the time. And if I want to, I can, I can be checking my tuning at any point. I don't have to turn it on and turn it off. And if I want to mute the signal, all I have to do is just you know, roll back the volume pedal and the signal gets cut off from the rest of the chain, but it doesn't get cut off from the tuner. So in the middle of a set or between songs, I can be checking my tuning and just leave it on all the time. Now with that being the case, that's another functional reason why I've actually selected to put the tuner on the top row. Now you can see there's blank space here. Uh, the nice thing about these boards is, let's say down the, the road, I wanna test out another pedal or um, I, I start to collect some more that I wanna get on here, I've got plenty of space and I can kind of build this as I go. So the tuner is gonna be out of the way, it's up here on the top. Now on the bottom row, which is kind of easier to get to, from the pedal, we then take a, a, the output of that pedal goes underneath the board and it comes into my SD1, the first drive pedal. This pedal um, is then gonna run now straight through the chain. So this pedal stacks into the dry martini. So like we were talking before, I can kind of play with those two independently or in combination to kind of get some different drive sounds. That's gonna run into my delay pedal and then the delay pedal finally runs into the reverb pedal and out of the reverb pedal, we're gonna send our signal to our amp or our board or wherever we're going. Um, so with all of that being the case, oh, and then just real quickly, just to show you, you know, we did the best we could underneath this um, in terms of power. We kind of got everything uh, twist tied and zip tied kind of out of the way. And I've also tried to keep the patch cables as best I can, uh, keeping the patch cables kind of away from the power cables, just so that we don't have any kind of, um, you know, interference signaling, uh, that kind of stuff. So, you know, it's, hey, we're doing the best we can, right? Budget board build, so we got some zip ties and twisty ties. Um, and it's it's not too bad, you know, it's using this dual lock, you know, everything's on here, uh, really sturdy. This this dual lock, I do recommend uh, as a step up from Velcro. A lot of boards, you know, you know, in the old days, we just used Velcro for this kind of stuff, but this, this dual lock that you can get is just solid. This stuff, your pedals are not coming off of here um, <laughs> without a crowbar. So let's get this, we're gonna get everything switched up and then we'll run it through some sound samples for you guys to show you even with a modest selection of pedals that we have here, um, you can get some really diverse uh, and usable tones. So hang with us and we'll get those sound samples right now. All right, well, we are all set up here. And uh, just to give you kind of a quick overview of how we're running things, I am taking the signal straight from the guitar right into the volume pedal. And then that's gonna run through our pedal board and coming out of the reverb, we're going right into just a clean amp. I've got a, um, a high watt um, with a 412 cabinet and a 160 or 121 ribbon mic uh, as a model that we're going into. Now there's no, absolutely no effects um, or no processing of any kind coming from the Helix other than the amp. So what we're hearing, uh, all of the tones and everything are coming from the pedal board uh, and going into that amp. So uh, just to hear kind of what the, the amp sounds like, you can see here on the board, nothing's on except for uh, the tuner, uh, like we talked about how I've got it wired. But this is just kind of what the amp sounds like, so. dry, I mean nothing to write home about. Um, now just with a, a very subtle kind of reverb setting, I've got it kind of low, uh, but you can get that just nice kind of warm tone. So playing that same thing. You know, you got kind of that space to go along with there. Now as I promised you, uh, my absolute favorite tone on this uh, is the church reverb setting and so uh, you can really go uh, I'm just gonna switch over to like finger picking style but you can really get some just spacious tone So that's really something uh, interesting. Now I'm gonna, it, that's obviously a little bit 
um, over over the top. But um, well, actually, you know what? Keeping it there, you can uh, take that even further. Um, I've added in a modulated delay. And I'm going to keep that church sound on there. And as we talked earlier, using these kinds of settings on the pedals, I can kind of simulate some of those other modulations, choruses, flangers, different things like that. Um, and so you can still get these like ambient kind of tones, uh, even with just those two pedals. So. <laughs> I mean, we're not talking about an actual chorus or an actual uh, modulation effect, but we're talking about things that can kind of get close. So it still has that flexibility. Okay, well, let's getting over to the, the drive section. So I'm going to bring that back down uh, to a, a lower kind of reverb, uh, just so that there's still, still some uh, space on there. Now, as I promised, um, this overdrive, so like if I were just to play... And then just add in the light SD1, so... You know, it's it's not too bad, so you, you can get some bluesy lick. get that broken up sound but it's not too over the top now in contrast if we just put on the dry martini as I was saying this one's got just some punch uh, right there kind of in the mid range it's really it's it's a lot more than the SD one so uh, just with again same kind of settings <laughs> So there's still some fuzz on that, but it's really, really when you get both of them running into, you can get some pretty heavy tones uh, when you got it. So I'm going to uh, bring the SD1 running into the dry martini, uh, and this is kind of what you can get. Um, you switch over to some humbucking pickups, and you can also uh, kind of increase this effect, but just a... So just from a few pedals like that, uh, you can really um, increase the, the flexibility and the, the styles that you can cover with just these four pedals. And the final thing, um, if I throw on, I'm going to put this on just to a tape delay uh, so that we're not getting too much modulation. But already, I mean, you can get some lead kind of solo tones kind of in that heavy zone. So. <laughs> the board it's it's basic it's very minimalistic um, in the selection of pedals that we have but honestly even from what we've heard here you can kind of set and uh, reset this configuration to get yourself a lot of options uh, when it comes to playing styles and things like that so let's uh, kind of give you guys some ideas of what this pedal board could cost you um, as we wrap up this video so we'll be back in just a minute all right, well, we have built the board, we've listened to the board, so now let's go through what, what's this board going to cost us. I said at the top that we wanted to choose pedals that were affordable and accessible, and as you can see up here, for the shopping list that we had for the current pedals we were using, it's going to run you about $400 to get this kind of basic setup. But the good news here is, even for $400, you're going to be spending close to that kind of money on single pedals if you kind of go down the boutique uh, pedal route or different things like that. So that kind of money to start out with a board that's as flexible as the one we have is a really, really good deal. Now, obviously, I didn't include things like the volume pedal or the tuner in that list uh, just because, hey, you know, that's a personal preference. I like the volume pedal. Maybe you don't. Uh, and the tuner is just kind of basic gear that you need. It's not really an effect. So I uh, hope you learned something from that, maybe got inspired to build your first board, or perhaps mix up a current board. Well, as always, until next time, play on, my friends. Play on.